This is my lunchbox planner. It is the DeWalt 734, and I'm sure you've seen one before, and chances are you probably have one too. It comes with a three knife cutting head that I'm going to replace today with this helical head from mywoodcutters.com. Now they were gracious enough to send me this out and I cannot say thank you enough to these guys. Go check them out at mywoodcutters.com. I'll have a link in the description below. Before I break out the tools to install this new cutter head, I need to clean up all of the shavings left behind from the stock three knife cutter head. The shavings are so large that they inevitably get clogged at either the dust chute on the back of the planer or somewhere in my dust collector hose. Either way, these shavings end up collecting all up in this lunchbox and there ain't no one eating them at lunch, if you know what I mean. So I used everything from my brush to my dust collector to now my air compressor to get what's left of yesterday's projects out of my planer so I can get to installing this new helical head planer. Now with the planer cleaned out and unbolted from the mobile base, it's the perfect time to get some noise level readings with the stock head. So after I lug all 36 kilograms of this planer, that's 80 pounds for you imperial knuckleheads, over to my outfeed table I could take a breather and then plug it in to get my base noise levels. Now I set up my iPhone right over there over my right shoulder there. On a tripod it's roughly 4 feet away and I've got a sound meter app running so I can get my decibel readings. And as soon as I fire up that planer, you can see those DBs jump up to 92 with a max of almost 94. That's as loud as the average Banshee. Now I'm gonna be running a small board of quilted maple through three times to get a general average of how loud the stock knives are. And I'm gonna be lowering the cutter head a 30 second every pass. You can see the sound levels jump up dramatically with every pass and hearing protection is for sure a must with this machine. You will for sure lose some hearing if not. Wait, did you say something? Well, anyways, after three passes, you can see that on average, right around 100 dB is the loudest it gets when making a cut. That is the equivalent of using a jackhammer. So basically using a three knife planer to mill some lumber is the same thing as using a jackhammer to break up concrete. That is loud. And here are the shavings from that board, long and sticky. Well, not really sticky, but sticky as in will stick all up in my dust collection. But anyways, the quality of cut though isn't terrible. There is definitely a little bit of tear out that's hard to see on camera, but it kind of feels like sanding with 80 grit sandpaper. And now that we've got that out of the way, we can start breaking this thing down to install the new helical head. First step, we're gonna be removing this dust chute off the back of the planer. There are three screws that hold the thing on, one on each side and one pesky one up underneath the bottom. Get those screws out and then it pulls right off. Then we'll be using the supplied T30 Torx screw that comes with the planer to remove the two bolts that hold on the top cover over the cutter head itself. Now we're gonna use that same tool and break all of the bolts that hold the cover that holds the knives onto the cutter head. And I will save you the painful time that it is of watching me do that and just know that I did it. But I'm gonna use that same tool. It also has magnets on the backside to remove the cover and then also remove the knives, Be careful. They're super sharp. And then it's back to the same tool and we're gonna use it to remove the handle that is used to adjust the cutter head height. And then also the four bolts on the top of the planer, which holds the whole casing around the entire lunchbox. Once you get those four bolts out, the whole top just lifts right off. Simple as that. With that, I'm gonna fold up the in-feed and out-feed tables, and I'm gonna turn it over to its side, which will reveal the gear mechanism that is used to raise and lower the cutter head from the bed. And it's really simple. I have actually never turned this over until right now, and I didn't know it was this simple. It's just 
two gears on each side connected by a chain so when one side goes up it makes the other side go up and when one side goes down it makes the other side go down and those two sprockets are just held on by a couple of set screws you loosen them up and then the whole thing slides right off those shafts just keep it together don't lose them now with the planter set back up right I could remove the retaining clips as I'm calling it I don't really know the technical name of what this is called but it's just two clips on either side of the adjustment screw that keeps the planer from going up and down when you turn the screw and the screw doesn't unscrew I I don't really know what I'm saying here but once you get those clips off then you have to unscrew the adjustment screw and I won't make you watch me do the whole thing in real time I had to turn it a lot as you can see I fast forward this a little bit so you're welcome but you just turn it and turn it and turn it until it comes all the way out. And in hindsight, I probably should have left the planer head lower so I wouldn't have had to turn it so much, but eh, this is my first time. And now over onto the other side of the planer, I need to remove a plastic guard that protects the gearing for the roller assemblies. And it's just two screws up underneath there and then the cover comes down and that reveals all of that nice, lovely chain and cogs and all that fun stuff. But before I get to that stuff, I need to remove this up and down adjustment screw, just like the other side. I'm gonna remove this retaining clip, get those two bolts out of there, remove the clip, and then you got it, unscrew it. And like I said on the other side, I wish I would have put this head down lower to start and then I wouldn't have had a Turn this one billion times because yeah I'm gonna have to turn it one billion times to get it back in okay so now I'm on to the gearing part here I need to remove these sprockets and they have these little spring clips and I removed the one spring clip and then work this one cog off is it a cog or is this is it a sprocket or is that the same thing I don't know anyways I'm gonna remove another spring clip on this other sprocket cog and then that whole assembly pulls right off so back over onto the pulley side now and look at all that years of cake sawdust just hanging out man a lot so i need to disengage the cutter head lock i'm pretty sure that's what it's called but that's what i'm gonna call it anyways if it's not so anyways i need to dis engage it by unscrewing it and then just letting the little lock piece it's just a little piece of metal it's gonna fall down and then that is gonna let me freewheel the cutter head so I can remove this belt it's just a drive belt and I had a heck of a time getting it off walking off a drive belt usually isn't this hard but this thing was tight like tiger then with the drive belt off I needed to reinstall the headlock so I could get the bolt off of the pulley, but it'll only be temporary because you can't use the headlock with the helical head. So anyways, I really didn't even need to lock the head because come to find out that nut right there, it was pretty loose. It was basically hand tight. Didn't take anything to take it off. And then you just pull the pulley off. I'm checking it out, looks great. Oh, don't forget the little key. There it is. Perfect. And now we can actually remove the entire head. It is only held in by two snap rings, one on each side, a nice big fat snap ring right there, an internal one, and then another internal snap ring on the other side. And then once you get that off, it is free to come out of the entire unit. Well, actually not quite yet, because like I said just a second ago, I got to remove that cutter headlock and I'm doing that right now just simply removing the actual lock and then also I'm going to remove the spring that keeps that lock engaged because we don't need it and can't actually use it with the helical head so now is actually the time that we're going to hammer out this head and I'm going to use this scrap piece of ash it's maybe longer than I needed but it's the right size and I didn't want to cut it so I used it as is 
and as you can see there it just falls down a little bit it didn't come all the way out the first time so i had to finagle it just a little bit and then actually go back to using the piece of ash and hammer and smack it a little bit harder and convince it to come out but once it went all the way through on the back side with that larger bearing it came out no problem and as you can see here in just a second there is the old head out and about ready to hit the town so with the head out and all the covers off i figured this would be the perfect time to blow out all of the sawdust out of all the little nooks and crannies that have been holding on to every speck of dust over the past couple years i wanted it to feel like a brand new machine with this new head and getting rid of all the sawdust was pretty much the best thing i could think of to do for it i was really really stunned how much was actually in there and now it's time to prep the helical head from mywoodcutters.com they sent me this Lux Cut 3 in this wooden box and I'm using it to my advantage. The head won't slide into the planer with the cutters attached. So I need to remove all 40 cutters and keeping it in the box is the perfect way to get it done. Now also in that box they send you a couple of T25 Torx drivers and I'm using one of them here to break the bolts. And then I'm going to come back and use my electric screwdriver to remove them all completely. I also decided it was a good idea to put on some gloves because these carbide cutters are really, really sharp. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all 40 of them and then put them to the side. So then I can slide in the cutter head just like so, starting from the pulley side and then working my way over to the other side, getting that bearing right up there on the edge. And then I'm gonna have to grab my rubber mallet to bang it home and I gotta say the fitment is nothing short of OEM like it's it is a perfect perfect fit and with the cutter head installed it was now time to reinstall all 40 knives don't worry I'm not gonna make you watch me install all 40 of them but after I tightened up that last one and gave her a spin to see how she looked it was time to reassemble but don't worry I'm also not going to make you watch me reassemble this thing. Just watch this video in reverse and I put it back together perfectly. So let's get some readings on how loud this new helical head is. So just like before, I've got my iPhone in the same spot on the same tripod and it is about four feet away. And as I kick it on, you can see the decibels jump up to 88.7, 89.4, uh, about 90. So let's average it to be about 89 decibels when not cutting wood. And that is already three decibels wider than the straight knives before cutting any stock. So as I run it through on the first pass, you'll see it jumps up there. Looked like it hit about 92.8. I'm gonna lower the head a 32nd of an inch and then let's run it through again and see what the decibels come out to looks like it hit 94.8 a little bit louder that time on the second time through I'm gonna lower it down another 30 second of an inch and let's see what we get here on the third pass looks like uh, it's hard to say I think it was around 92 but we average those three together and we get 93.2 which is almost 7 DB quieter than the straight knives at 100 db which is roughly the equivalent of being two times louder than the helical head and now let's check out the shavings from the helical head on the right is the new shavings and they are so much smaller those will definitely not be getting stuck in the planer or in my dust collector at all and the quality of cut from the helical head is just man i wish you could reach through the screen to feel this it is like buttery smooth so smooth so as i clean up here i want to give a big shout out to mywoodcutters.com for sending me out this lux cut 3 i am gonna absolutely love having this in the shop and milling might actually be enjoyable now and if you're thinking about upgrading your planer or joiner they have got the helical head that you need so go check out the link in the description below at mywoodcutters.com and tell them i sent you all right, we'll see you guys in the next one.
Thank you.